What is up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle today with the next episode in our playthrough of Mountain Blade Warband. Now you may have noticed something different, you might have noticed an abundance of 1080p ness in this episode, and that is because I finally made the jump up to 1080p episodes. It does convolute my recording process just a little bit because the file sizes are quite frankly enormous, but I feel like for games like this it will be a little bit nicer for you guys to see some of the detail that's been around. On a different note, and even more exciting, I'm finally done with my finals. And so I'm back to recording, I should be able, I do want to offer you guys an apology because I haven't been around at all on the channel trying to talk to you guys, I haven't been responding to comments, I have been completely and totally bogged down with just loads and loads and oodles and ass loads and any other type of quantifera you can think of for, oh man, no no no, I don't want Yarl, no no no, I don't want Yarl, damn it. Okay, so I was gonna fight these guys on our own, but it looks like Yarl Mary here, being the douchebag he is, just jumped in to help. I suppose we're just gonna storm the field. I couldn't care less at this point. We're not even, I was hoping we would get five or six renown for this, but unfortunately we're gonna get two because the lords decided to jump in on our fight. I wish you could tell them to back off and let you take it at the cost of maybe some reputation. That would be a pretty sweet deal, but that option isn't in the game yet. Maybe we can hope for it in Bannerlord. Speaking of Bannerlord, I am so goddamn excited about Bannerlord. I can't even tell you guys the amount to which I am stoked that Bannerlord is coming. Bannerlord, if you don't know, is the sequel to this game. It is Mountain Blade 3, I suppose, if you wanted to give it an iteration on the back end. Ooh, and off with his nasty red bearded head. I bet it's got all kinds of crumblies in it too. Whenever I grow a beard, I get lots of food crumbs in it. It's an accidental thing that just sort of occurs. Now you're gonna see me screwing up a lot in this episode because my screen is so much larger that I'm having trouble seeing things along the edges. It is one of those weird things about upgrading that it makes it a tad more difficult to aim, which was an unexpected side effect of this whole thing. But you guys know that I can't aim for Jack anyways, so we'll just take what we have to begin with. Ooh, I got him though. It didn't mess with me there. He is a casual ta. And down he goes. I'm gonna help out. Oh, nope, he doesn't need help. He already axed him in the back of the head. That's how we like to do it. That's kind of our calling card. That's our Ace of Spades type deal. Is we just axe you in the back of the head. And then when you see a guy laying on the battlefield with an axe in the back of his head, they're like, oh, well, Mad Dog McGriddle and the Nerd Castle were here. We already know what happened. I hope you can tell from the tone of my voice how excited I am to be back to recording. One of the coolest things about LPing is that I get to talk to you guys on a daily basis and... I've been feeling fairly abandoned lately. I've been feeling like a kitten out in the rain with just like sad music playing and then a car goes by and soaks the kitten and you're like, no kitten, I want to hug you. I don't want you to be sad anymore. I am the kitten. That's how I've been feeling lately. I've been probably in my house for about two weeks now without any human contact. It's been nonstop notes. In fact, if you go to the Facebook page, I have, I'm going to post a picture of my study sheet that I've been using to study over the last week or two. And it is just abominable. It is huge. It is like a snowman. It's it's like a bumble. It is terrible. Let's see. I don't think we picked up anything worthwhile that anybody's actually going to want to equip. Yeah. It's just loot. So, what's going on in-game? Let's talk about that for a moment because there have been circumstances that have changed the way that the game's going to play out from here on. We are at peace right now, so the Kingdom of Nords is not fighting with anyone. On the negative side, we declared peace after losing Dirim and losing Uxkal, so we lost a large proportion of our territory right about the time our lords decided to sue for peace, which was a strange circumstance because we do have fairly decent armies. If you look at the lords, Merry you're still rocking 16 veterans and 9 Huskarls, most of the armies that are running around are fairly top tier, so I'm not sure what the AI is thinking right now and why they've declared peace. We had a great advantage. With the extra funds, we could have pushed a little bit harder, but I guess they felt like the campaign was unwinnable and having lost a couple of guys, they didn't want to continue forward. So we're going to take the word of our lords, and we have to decide what we want to do now. We have to decide on a course of action. We are earning money right now, so that's one thing. Is that between our mercenary payments and all of the profitable enterprises we've set up, we are breaking even. If we go to our weekly budget report, you'll see here that we're coming out on top with everything. Which is good, although our revenues have gone down from both Sargoth and Tyr. They were both above 100 just a little bit ago, and they've both gone down. That one by about 40, and that one by about 80. Luckily, as long as we're even, I don't really mind. It's when you're losing money during times of peace that you start to get very, very desperate for solutions. Or you can just run around like a renegade madman annihilating stuff. Let's go find some bandits, though, because we need to pass our time in a... 
I almost said a procreative way, but we need to be proactive. That's not the word I'm looking for. We don't need to be procreating right now. That is the last thing we need. There's a big old group of sea raiders right there. Let me see who's wounded, who's okay. We'll give ourselves some trained footmen there. We have some more Nord recruits. Convert them into more infantry. Let's go ahead and get in here and we'll fight with some of these bigger groups of sea raiders. This isn't really what I want to spend an entire episode doing, but we've got to wait until war breaks out again. Otherwise, we're sort of in a position where we're hired. I mean, we're working for a faction, but there's nobody for us to kill. And that is the worst situation to be in a, ga in a game which is predominantly about killing people. Peace is not a good thing when that's pretty much your motivating factor. Ooh, we got a really good position here. Let's have everybody hold right here, and then I'm going to have my infantry step forward. It's maybe right there. No, we'll have them up a little bit higher. We'll have them right here, so that'll give the archers a little bit of room to fire. But at the same time, I think Nizar right now is being assigned to our infantry brigade. I need to reassign him to cavalry so that he follows me around and he acts as my personal guard. I am going to build him up. I'm going to give him armored horses, and I am going to try and keep him on horseback. He's got fairly decent armor right now, but I'd like to get him upgraded a little bit further before we go too much deeper into the game. But as of right now, focusing on our companions might be a good way to pass the time in between warfare, so... They have a fairly decent position as well. I might consider... This landscape is not conducive to fighting on horseback, so I might consider stepping back here and jumping off Wiggles. Wiggle Chiggy. And we'll step up to our front line. And I'm going to fight alongside the shield wall here. I think that's probably going to be our best plan. My kingdom for a speed up button right now. I hate waiting for these things to begin. Luckily our sharpshooters are doing a wee bit of damage. They don't seem to be affecting anybody too much. And that's largely a function of the fact that the Sea Raiders have shields. They have really good armor. They aren't particularly or susceptible to any type of ranged fire other than crossbows however we are causing them casualties before they get here and the casualties are going to continue increasing before the initial battle kicks off let me make sure that i have infantry selected and now it's time for our charge i'm going to take a position right here on the right side flank just to ensure that they don't end up getting turned we don't need anybody getting turned right now we need everybody to stay on the side that they're on so those gentlemen are now dead and down if they were dead enough, we would have a zombie situation on our hands. Luckily, there are no zombies to be concerned with. I'm not going to let him run away. Well, I may not have a choice. Although arrows might solve my continual problem of his existence. And maybe an archer will get him. Maybe? Archers? Huh? Anybody? Do your part. Shoot him in the heart. The world's luckiest sea raider right there. Well, aside from the giant scar that he just got. They're so close, too. You can watch those arrows. Oh, they got him. Just in time. And that's the downside to getting off your horse right there, as I've said in previous episodes. You get off your horse, you can't run down all those stragglers that decide to rout. We've got... Okay, so we didn't have too many bad casualties right there. We lost a lower tier soldier. Nizar got wounded again, as usual. That's what Nizar does. He gets laid out. It's, it's not a problem getting laid out. It's okay. Sometimes you gotta get laid out. That's half the reason most people go to bars every Saturday night. Let's see if maybe there's a new Sea Raider den over here, and we'll go to Rivacheg, and we'll talk to the Lord, and we'll see if he can give us a quest to wipe those bastards out, get ourselves a little bit of extra Skrilla to build ourselves a villa in Manila. But I don't see anything. It looks as though the photoshopping for Rivacheg got cut off. A little bit of an oddity right there. There's got to be a Sea Raider outpost around here somewhere. There are just too many Sea Raiders running around. But I don't see it. Maybe it's up over this way somewhere. Let's have a look around. We're gonna there it is. It's right up next to Rivacheg. Let's talk to oh, I don't know. I don't remember who's the king of Rivacheg or the controlling lord. Maybe it's Malaysia. He's hanging around a little close. Nope, he wants us to make war with the Serenid Sultanate. That's not my problem. I don't really care about the politics of Vagirs. I'd rather let them just sort of do their thing. Oh, our mercenary payment went up. Well, at least that's a good thing. It's a plus. We'll take it. Gastia, I almost know for a fact, is not going to be Rivacheg's lord. He wants us to hunt down Pechnak the Scarred. He murdered one of my men, and he's in... Where is he? He's in Old Bourbon. Okay, we'll go to Old Bourbon. We could use some extra honor. We're trying to turn ourselves into a Arbiter of Justice. 
Malaysia, Mariga. Mariga sounds familiar. Maybe it's Mariga. There it is right there. So we're going to take the quest. Let's go to Rivacheng and sell off our stuff first, though, because you do have the tendency to get a whole lot of booty, and not just in town, but you end up getting a lone load of booty from every single den, I suppose, that you raise and annihilate. So let's give ourselves a little bit of space to deal with before we head on down there, because there's nothing worse than raiding one of these places and ending up with absolutely nothing with regards to space. Anything here that I like? I do like that Corbully. That is a cool piece of equipment. Although the defensive upgrade is not quite where I would want it to be. We may end up using plate mail or something along those lines. I typically tend to prefer that armor, just graphically. Aesthetically, it's what I like to have. So there's an extra little bit of cash. Save my game since it's been a little while. And then let me make sure everybody's arranged where I want them to be. Because I'd prefer to only specifically, let's put, I'm going to move them way down the line because I don't want them coming at all. I just want melee guys. Got Huskarls and Veterans. Okay, how is my health looking? Is my health okay? 53. Fantastic. Let's go and destroy a yet another Sea Raider landing. Or get wiped out. It could be one or the other. You can never really tell with these things. Sometimes you catch a javelin right to the side of the dome. And then you don't get any credit. If you fall down, all these guys, worthless. They don't finish it for you. You have to flog them when you get back to camp. I'm going to tell them to follow me for just a moment because I really don't want them running off. As I've said before, we've done this quest before. There's not a whole lot of things to cover with regards to my overall strategy in this endeavor. Swing for the head there and took him out nice and soundly. I'm going to have everybody follow me and we're going to... Looks like there's a bunch down there. So yeah, let's pick off these guys on this end next to the longboats. And once we've got that handled... We should be able to head down to the other side and make a little bit more of a difference with that main bulk of the enemy force. Down he goes, and there spawned another one. So you want to hang out down here, and down he goes. Anybody else? Okay, so nobody spawned. So at this point, what we want to do, there's five over here. I'm going to sound a full charge. Oh, there's six. Oh, never mind. That's a shield on a mast. I thought there was somebody standing behind the boat in sort of an odd position. We are going to get skirmished fairly hard right now. Especially from those guys on the right. But I wouldn't be surprised if that one Huskarl there was able to handle everybody on that side. I'm going to follow this group over and we're going to help out with this main combat because it is four on three. And in the issue of fairness, typically I only care about fairness if the fairness is stacked against me. If it's stacked against the enemy, eh, to hell with fairness. Who cares? Let the unfairness come. All right, so there's a few more. Oh, God, they are piled up and stacked over here. Ooh, he tried to get a little sneak attack in there, but I don't accept that. No sneaky, sneaky, stabby, stabby around here, sir. We're keeping this on an even keel because those uneven keels, they don't fly at the Nerd Castle. And a keel never flies anyways. Keels float. What the hell am I even talking about? My, <laughs> my metaphors are rapidly getting out of order. Oh, well. Let's move our way back. Eh, never mind. They might actually kill everybody before we get back over there. Oh, please don't lose it. Huskarl, I hate you so much. How can you be twice the level of a Sea Raider and still get killed by one? Drives me nuts. The attack AI doesn't pay attention at all. It's because it's offensive. It's not reactive. If you look at the way the AI performs in battle, at least when AI is versus AI, they seem to be very, very offensive rather than defensive. But when they're fighting the player, it seems like they're defensive. You can never tell. Male shirt, reinforced. Ooh, a reinforced Nordic shield. Let's replace our cracked shield with a reinforced one. I don't suppose that any of this is better than what we have. It's getting close, but it's not quite there. We have some 22 male chassés. So I'll probably, or chaussies, if you wanted to say them that way. That's cool. However you want to pronounce it. Chaussie sounds super awesome, too. Chaussie sounds like a type of skate shoe or something. Got these new chaussies down at Zoomies. Let's go talk to, I think it was Mariga, actually. It may, nah, it wasn't Malaysia. It was Mariga. I have bad memory. There he is. Let's go get our cash. And there it is. We got ourselves 3,000 experience, two renowned 1,500 dinars. That leveled us up to 19. That did a reasonable job for Behester and also Nizar, so that's going to help us out in the future. We're going to take our leave of him. Let's go to our party menu, and we're going to handle some of our organizational stuff right now. With Behester... 
Behester was our intelligence guy. He's our out in the field, keeping it real geologist ranger type. He's he's our Aragorn. He's gonna be our beardy man Aragorn, seducing all the elves and so forth. We're gonna continue moving his intellect on up, and I believe I'm gonna continue by giving him. Let's bump his pathfinding up to four so that we can move around the field map a little bit quicker. His archery is already okay. His one-handed weapons are okay. Power draw five might be useful for him in the future too, but he's low enough level right now to where we don't need to worry about allocating things perfectly on the first go. Plus, if you don't know, you can go to the game's save files or the game's player files and you can change people's stats via README as well. If you mess things up, you can reset their stats that way. Let's see, he's all done there. Mathel. Mathel is already rocking Chausies. 22, so those aren't going to be any better for her. Her battered male is pretty good. She's pretty much looking squared away with regards to gear. There are some minor things. I'd like to get her a better helmet, maybe something a little bit more basket helmy or something that's a bit more like a kettle helm. Give her a tad more defense, but she's okay for now. We don't need to worry about her. Let's look at Fartimenter. Let's have a look here. And with Fartimenter... His crude male shirt is going to be outshined by this male shirt, only slightly. He's got a couple of shields. It's all right. He needs the new boots, so we'll give him the Chausies. There they are. People moving on up in the world. They already ate a bunch of those grapes. I was hoping I could sell them, but they get down on those grapes. They're much like me. I enjoy myself a fanciful grape. I live right next to where a bunch of vineyards are anyway, so grapes are always cheap around here. I've heard that for some locations, grapes can get, ex like excessively expensive with Nizar, what do we want him to do well we need to get his agility leveled up so that he can get a better horse so we'll start there and since we're gonna be giving him agility on that level I don't know where I want to put his stats it's a tough call we started off with his surgery already and we were giving him intellect so maybe that's a bad plan maybe he's gonna be our other doctor and I don't want to put him in with the cavalry for now well, we'll give him the agility. We'll continue putting it in for surgery. Maybe we'll hybrid him a little bit. Hybriding tends to be a fairly terrible idea, but I feel like living on the edge. The universe doesn't control me right now. Give him some one-handed weapon skill. He could use a shield, too. What's his shield at, too? Let's go to his equipment, and we'll give him this cracked Nordic shield so he's got something to get behind when things get rough. His armor's looking okay already. Does he have any throwing skill? No. Not a single skill in the throwing. We'll give him a Nordic helmet. His scimitar is 30 cutting. And we're not going to do much better. For a cavalry weapon, that's not bad. And it's got reasonable reach too, which is what most cavalrymen are going to be looking for, is an excessive reach. That leaves us stacked up now. We need to level up some of these cats. So there they are, meow meow. Level up our skirmishers, because obviously we want to make sure we have a good ranged retinue. Some of you have been telling me how great your ranged troops are, and I really want to get a nice regiment of ranged troops to soften up the enemy. I have noticed that as they close the gap with us, our ranged troops do seem to probably do almost 15 to 20% casualties before the enemy even gets to us, and that's not bad in any case. Mad Dog McGriddle's leveled up too. Let's have a look at our stats. So this is probably going to be the last little bit we do in this episode. What was I doing here? I was working on Charisma. That's what I was doing. Let's get leadership up to five so we can have even more troops. Our weapon proficiencies are looking pretty sweet right now. I'm going to put some points into archery, even though we're not carrying things around. No, we'll stick with crossbows. We'll stick with crossbows. I hate that I can't reset one thing at a time. That's always bothered me, but whatever. I don't know how the whole system is arranged. We'll go with crossbows since I already have one of those in my inventory ready for siege warfare. We'll head back to Rivicheg. We'll sell off some of this stuff to make a little bit more dosh. And then once we've got that, it'll be time to break off the episode. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Mount and the Blade Warband. And I'm selling to the wrong vendor. Let me get my stuff back because he can't afford our milkshake. Our milkshake has brought his boy to the yard, but his boy doesn't have enough cash to really seduce us at this case. There we go. All right, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for a post 
finals episode where I feel happier, I'm feeling lighter, I'm feeling floatier. I was feeling like a little black rain cloud for the last week or two, and now I feel as though the sky has changed. The worst is over now. The sun is shining like a red rubber ball, to quote musical sources. I'll see you guys next time, and take care out there, everybody.